use of your imagination. That's really all it is. And if the idea scares you, you know real well you're on the right track. See, if the idea you're working with is comfortable, you're going sideways. You're not, there's, no, there's no growth involved. It's the stepping into the unknown that causes the fear. We don't want to do that. And then, because we don't want to do it, we've got to justify why we're not doing it. Well, the paradigm just starts pumping ideas into your head of why you shouldn't do it. And you start thinking, what would she think? What would he think? What would they say? What if this happened? What if that happened? Well, what if it did? You've got to be prepared to make some shifts. And understand this. If your results are stuck, you're stuck. You're mentally stuck. And you've got to change that. You've got to start doing things a little different. I have learned this from a good doctor, what I'm sharing with you. There's no trick to it. I am not some mental giant or genius. I'm an ordinary guy just like you. Well, you've got a perfect memory. There's nothing wrong with your memory. It's probably weak. Exercise it. It becomes strong. Exercise your imagination. It'll become strong. You have no idea what you can earn. And don't get hung up on money. I don't really care that much about money. Now, most people think I do because I talk about it a lot. Get to the point where you're looking at money as just a product. And you can create the product. It's the manifestation of thinking. And you've got to be prepared to invest in yourself. I'm always investing in myself. I honestly believe I'm the best investment in the world for me. There's no end to what I'm capable of earning. And if there's no end to what I'm capable of earning, there's no end to what you're capable of earning. None of us are aware of what we're capable of doing. And we let our present conditions control our thinking. Yet it's a dumb thing to do. Why do we do it? Well, because we've been conditioned to do it. Our parents did it. Why did they do it? Because their parents did it. Why did they do it? Because their parents did it. And, and then the school system. What's the school system? It's just a bunch of parents. That's really what it is. Somebody else's parents teaching your kids. And so they're getting the same thing at school pretty well as they get at home. Does this mean they're bad people? It doesn't mean they're bad people at all. They just don't know and they don't know they don't know. The whole system it's designed to hold you down. Why is it that 3% of the population make it very big? 97% nice people, smart people are stuck. See, it really doesn't make any sense. I committed to study this material every day and follow proven direction. My income began to change. But what did it take? It took discipline. And I was taught very early when I first got this, that discipline is simply the ability to give yourself a command and follow it. And if you cannot give yourself a command and follow it, you are stuck. Make no mistake about it. Anything I say won't really mean very much. There is absolutely no way I can change you. Matt changes Matt. Kyam changes Kyam. Sandy changes Sandy. Bob changes Bob. No one can change you. But you can change it, and no one even can guess at what you're capable of doing. A habit is an idea that's fixed in your subconscious mind that you automatically express with no, no given any conscious thought. I had formed the habit of doing exactly what people that were getting the results I wanted to get until I found out they were lying or they didn't know what they were talking about. He said, you do exactly what I tell you until you find out I'm lying or that I don't know what I'm talking about. So I just made up my mind. I'm not going to judge what he says. I'm just going to do exactly what he said. Some of the things I was doing was so far out relative to what we were doing, we being all the people I mixed with, relative, friends. I got a sticker in the back, came from Van Der Waal, says the world would stop if it were run by the people who said it can't be done. It's not an easy thing to do. You're going to find out I'm not going to lie to you. You will probably from time to time think I'm arrogant. But I'm really not. I'm just very definite in my belief system. And I believe it because I've tested it and the results are there.
Where's the energy come from? It doesn't come from anywhere. It's already here. You don't get energy, you release energy. Desire is the triggering mechanism to release energy. When you've got a strong desire for a particular end, you will have the energy to do whatever it is to do. This idea of taking it easy is for other people. What is? Why do you want to take it easy? He'll ask Carnegie what he did with his spare time. He's, I don't have any spare time. Why would you want spare time? What are you going to do with spare time? Nothing? You're only here for a short time. Don't you want to grow all your days here? Don't you want today to be better than yesterday? It isn't going to be better than yesterday by accident. Yet isn't going to be better than yesterday because you're taking it easy. Yet isn't going to be better than yesterday unless you make it better than yesterday. If you're going to make it better than yesterday, you're going to have to know something today you didn't know yesterday. You're going to have to act on an idea that you haven't been acting on. This, this is very simple stuff. There's nothing complicated. You're never going to get a brain hernia from this. Our objective here is to turn your annual income into a monthly income. It's to turn your annual income. Now, you see, some of you are having difficulty even letting your mind go there. Your responsibility right now is not to think if you can do it. Your only responsibility is, do I want to do it? Do I want to? Does that make sense? Do I want to? That's all you have to ask. Do I want to? Do I want to feel better? Do I want to make it happen? That's it. Just want. See, I believe wants come from the essence of who you are. I believe you're God's highest form of creation. There is nothing on the planet that will equal you. So far as we know, we are it. We are the highest form of creation on the planet. The essence of who you are is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. There's perfection within us. See, all the other little creatures on the planet are completely at home in their environment. They blend in. All the other little creatures are completely at home in their environment. They blend in. You and I are the only creature that is totally disoriented in our environment. And that is because we've been given the godlike ability to create our own environment. Now think about that. We can create our own environment. They said, what do you want? I said, I want to be able to press a button. Cameras come out of the ceiling to permit me to communicate all over the world. Now, I was exaggerating, really. But they took me serious, so I didn't let them know. What's called, I think Paul would recognize me, called a floating cell. It's a house within a house. So then I was introduced to Richard Broder. Now, Richard, describe what you built in my backyard. Well, I think we built what was alive in your imagination. We built your vision. Now, if what was done, if I wanted it edited, do I have to have somebody come in there to do it? No, you don't. Uh, you Where could, could they be? They could be anywhere in the world. You've got to make up your mind that you're prepared to shift. You've got to make up your mind you're going to alter your perception. Perception is a mental faculty. You can look at everything you're doing different than you're looking at it. Whatever you're doing, you can turn your annual income to a monthly income. There isn't anybody any better than anybody else. It doesn't matter where you come from. What matters is where are you going to go? What are you going to do? You see, you can literally turn your annual income into a monthly income. You don't have to ask yourself how you're going to do it or if you're going to do it. If you do that... Think of all the things you could do by doing that. Money's only used for two things. One is to make you comfortable, and the other is to extend the good you do far beyond your own presence. You don't have to know how to do something. Yet, do you want to do it? Just do you want to? You've got to loosen your mind. You've got to let your paradigm stop controlling you. Let your mind take off. Do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? It's used for two things, make you comfortable and extend the good you do far beyond your own presence. 
Then start to understand there isn't anybody in the world that's better than you, and there isn't anybody that's any less than you. We're all the same. We look different. We sound different. We speak different languages. But we're all the same. Now, if you turned your annual income to a monthly income, what could you do with it? My goodness, there's so many things you can do. I'm going to tell you one thing you're not going to do with it. You're not going to take it with you. This idea of saving for your old age, saving for a rainy day, you'll get a rainy day. I follow their pattern. Andrew Carnegie spent half of his life earning money and the other half giving it away. Givers gain. You want to willingly give and graciously receive. You want to expand your mind. Expand your mind. What are you actually capable of doing? Now think. It's where you are and it's where you're going. That's all you need. It's so simple. You got to know where you are. You know where you are. You got to know where you're going. And you know something? Most of you don't know where you're going. You say, oh, yeah, we do. No, you don't. Most people are setting goals to do what they think they can do. They're taking into consideration what they know. They're taking into consideration the connections they've got. They're taking into consideration the money they've got. They're taking into consideration the people they're working with. None of that matters. Yet, that's doing what you think you can do. You've got to say, what do I really want to do? Jesse was when Sandy was sitting there. What do I really want to do? She didn't want to keep doing what she was doing. But she had never thought of that before. What do I really want to do? You know, wants come from the essence of who you are. Spirit, understand spirit. You're a spiritual being. Spirit's always for expansion and fuller expression. It's never for disintegration. It's always for expansion and fuller expression. You'll never be satisfied with where you are. Most people are afraid to even say they're dissatisfied. They think that means they're not happy. You can be very happy where you are. All right, there we go. Familia, grand rising, grand rising, grand rising, and happy Thursday. Welcome back to Mornings with Nano YouTube edition. I apologize a little bit about the late start. I wasn't connected to my mom's Wi-Fi, so uh, it took me a while to get it connected, and I was like, Mom, what happened? Did you change the Wi-Fi? And uh, she had changed the Wi-Fi a little bit, so I'm actually at my mom's house in New York. For those that don't know, I'm in New York right now. I'm not in Miami. I love. I would have loved to do this call from the living room, but she's out in the she's out in the living room having conversations with her friends, and I'm like, dude, it's 10 a.m. and you guys are having a coffee, just talking. Which I forgot that, you know, that's the Dominican way to do things. You know, I wake up and she's just in the in the living room with her friends having coffee. I walk out there with my <laughs> I walk out there with my boxers on and I'm like, uh, she's like, don't you have a call right now? I'm like, yeah, I do have a call right now. She's like, oh, I was going to go wake you up, <laughs> but I forgot. So, you know, but it's good to be back home. You know, if you, if you, you know, Hispanic backgrounds, you know how they are. They love to have their coffee with their friends in the, um, in the living room talking about stuff. So it's just pretty cool, but I'm happy to be home. I'm happy to, you know, just be able to come on here and share some amazing things with you guys. I know we have a lot of amazing things. Let me uh, go live on YouTube as, as well. Um, I mean, on, on IG Live. I know some people on IG Live are going to be like, where you at, Nano? Where you at? So, uh, But I'm excited, guys. I'm excited to be back. Uh, I have a really good training for you guys today. I'm actually... Uh, I want to tell you guys a story today, but before we do so, let's express some gratitude. Also, guys, let's share this with friends. Let's share this with family members. Remember, this call is free. So, you know, you guys can share this with whoever you guys want to share this at the end of the day. I want to make sure you guys know that, you know, this, the reason why I started to do these calls again was because, you know, for a while, for about a couple of months, I was doing these very privately for just a specific group of people. Um, but now we've opened it up to, to, you know, to the public twice a week. Because there was just so many people that did not have access to my information. And this information is next level. And I want to be able to give more people access to it. I, I know some people sometimes can't afford mentorship. I know what it's like. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I want to I wanna be able to at least give people access to some value 
that they can then use so that they can afford mentorship. Because I know that at the end of the day, whatever you pay for, right, you pay more attention to, right? My mentor always said, he said, Nano, you know, people pay more so they can pay more attention, right? So when you pay for something, you actually pay attention. Now, yes, obviously you guys get YouTube for free. So it's easy to just, hey, you know, Nano's always there. The recording is there. So it's sometimes easy to kind of take it for granted. And I'm not saying that you guys do it intentionally, but because it's free, because you don't have to, you know, go out of your way to pay for it and do certain things. Sometimes it's easy to be like, ah, you know, it's just another car. It's okay to miss it. But if you were paying $10,000 for this, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you would be sitting in front of your phone right now, you know, pen and paper in front of you. You would not dare miss the call because you're like, no, wait, I spent 10000 on this, you know? So that's why it's very important that you treat this like if you did pay $10,000 for it, because there's people that actually charge what, what I teach you guys for free, there's people that charge five thousand for this, ten thousand for it, because I know it, because I've I've been a part of the programs, right? I've been a part of the programs where people the exact same information, the exact same information that I teach you guys on this call. I promise you, there's there's mentors and and life coaches out there that charge people five k and ten k for this, a hundred percent. Okay, so just really, really take this in. Don't, don't just be like, oh, it's just another call. You know, he's just reading from a book or he's just, re you know, regurgitating uh, a, a training. No, this is, this is real information that I'm sharing with you guys here. So before we get started, let's express some gratitude as well. Uh, I think it's important that we always express gratitude. So let's express some gratitude. Uh, I am grateful for God. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful to be back home in New York with my mom, my dad, my little brother. Uh, my goddaughter, I want to be grateful for her. I'm grateful for my goddaughter and my godson, Wiley. I'm extremely grateful for, you know, my team and all the leaders in my organization. I want to give a huge shout out to my brother, uh, Gil, Jesus Gil. I don't know if he's on this call, but huge shout out to you, bro, on the huge accomplishment yesterday, man. You, you've been a mornings with Nano. You know, a day one, a one brother, bro. And you are a incredible leader. I am so grateful for you. I'm grateful that we partnered up together. And, you know, you're you're an incredible person, bro. And I'm grateful that, you know, you've been running this play alongside me all these years because it, it definitely has been a pleasure to be running alongside you, fam. So huge shout out to you, Gil. Grateful for you as well, man. And I'm just grateful for this team, grateful for this family, and grateful for everybody here. So Let's get this call started. Let me just set this up. Man, I wanted to uh, do this call from my living room, but my mom is in there talking. She's having coffee conversations right now. I think they left. I might be able to go. Okay, let's see this. Let us know what's one thing you're grateful for in the chat. Look at the, the OG mornings with Nano. This is how you know I'm home. When you got the OG mornings with Nano Cup, my mom brings me the coffee every morning. Toma papi, el café, you know. My mom is the best, man. I'm so grateful for my mom. My mom mm. is the best, man. She's, I can't even describe the, the gratitude I feel for my mom, for real, for real. All right, awesome. So today I'm going to talk about something powerful. Uh, I first want to tell you guys a story, okay? So when I started, when I started my entrepreneurship journey, I got a gift, all right? And it was a random gift. So I was, I was actually traveling, okay? Your most precious commodity. There we go. Give me one second, guys, and we're good to go. There we go. Perfect. So a couple of years ago, when I first started um, entrepreneurship, I was traveling and I got home and there was this book on my, on my table. And I asked my mom, I'm like, mom, where did this book come from? And she was like, oh, somebody sent it to you in a box, but I just, I opened the box. You, you guys ever had a mom that just opens everything and she doesn't check anything? She just opens all my letters. She opens all my boxes, everything from Amazon. She opens it and throws it out. So my mom does that, 
Okay. My mom, she does not care. She opens everything. She wants to see everything that's going on. Okay. She opens all my books. She wants to see everything that I ordered. So I, and me and her, I've always told her like, mom, at least wait till I get here because like, there's no privacy, bro. Like, you know, it's like, there's no privacy. So, so I asked her like, yo, so I didn't order the book, mom. So it wasn't me. Cause I get home and she like, she like, you know, my mom, she, she was mad at during that time because I used to buy a lot of books. I used to buy, buy a lot of books and she like, she, I walk in and right away, she like, no, no, I can't believe you bought another book. Like how many books are you going to continue to buy? Long story short, you know, I tell my mom, mom, I didn't buy this book. So like, I don't know who it is that sent me this book. She's like, well, you're not going to know. Cause I threw the box away a couple days ago. I'm like, sheesh, man. So I'm never going to know who bought me this book. Now, what was the book? This was the book right here. Okay. It's all messed up today. Okay. The pages is all messed up, you know, but it was the book, the monk who sold his Ferrari. That was the book that was given to me. And still to this day, I don't know who bought me this book, but this book changed my life. Okay. And let me tell you guys what this book is about really quick. Okay. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It's in my top five, a hundred percent in my top five. Okay. Every time somebody asks me like, yo, what is your top five books? I always mention the monk who sold his Ferrari, but it's crazy because I don't know who bought me the book. Okay. So what ended up happening was I start reading the book. Now I'm intrigued. I'm like, sheesh, somebody sent me the book. Maybe it's like a book from God, the whole nine. So I start reading the book. Now, not to not to mess up the book at all or the story, let me just give you guys kind of like the, let me just give you guys like the surface level of the book. The book is about this rich lawyer who worked in New York. He was like the top lawyer, making millions of dollars, eating steaks every night, driving his Ferrari, you know, like he was a multimillionaire, you know, lawyer for the top companies in the world. And he, and he worked in New York. And, you know, after all those years of working and, you know, eating them steaks and doing this and doing that, you know, he got caught up. And I'm, from what I remember, I think he had a heart attack and he ends up having a heart attack in the book. And after he has his heart attack, he has like this, this epiphany and he has like this moment, this breakthrough, this clicking moment. And he decides that he's going to sell everything. So he sells his Ferrari, he sells his houses, he sells everything, and he goes to the Himalayan mountains. I think in India, if I'm not mistaken, correct somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But he goes towards the, the Himalayan mountains. And what ends up happening is he decides to become a monk and he starts to practice monk. Like he goes to a community of monks, people who like are off society, who live in the mountains you know, who meditate all day, like, you know, they practice a whole different lifestyle over there, like true, like different food, different everything. And he becomes a monk for a couple, um, for a couple months. And then when he's done with that, he ends up coming back and he ends up coming back to one of his friends and he's teaching him all the lessons that he learned while he was a monk. And the book, he's breaking down every single story. And it is an unbelievable book. Like, it's one of those books that you can't put down, right? Because it's a story. So it's not like, a, hey, these are the 10 keys to success. No, it's a book that's a story. So he's telling you the story while teaching it to you. So as he's teaching his friend, he's teaching you the lesson. So funny how it is, last night I arrived. And I arrived late last night because I left Miami late due to, due to, tra due to, um, there was a lot of, uh, traffic coming up, you know, to, to, to the Northeast because there was weather and so on and so forth. So I ended up getting home late, like at two in the morning. And for some reason I walk in and I know my little brother loves this book. So I know he's been reading it and it's on top of the table. And for some reason I grab it cause I haven't seen it in so long. And it's broken. Look, like it's all ripped up, but it has all my highlights. I know my little brother took it and everything. And I open it up. And when I open it up, I ended up opening it up to the chapter of your most precious commodity. And I'm like, this is what I'm going to talk about tomorrow morning's with Nano. Like, I'm going to talk about your most precious commodity. Now, can anybody guess what is your most precious commodity? Can anybody tell me what you guys think your most precious 
commodity is? Does anybody know what your most precious commodity is? Anybody want to take a take a guess? Your most precious. I'll let you guys. There you go. Time. Time is our most precious commodity. And in the book, he talks about it now. And he explains time in a way that most people don't. Listen to this real quick. And I'm, I'm going to be reading to you guys from the book. But I also want to be, I want you guys to be taking notes. Because I have these certain things highlighted that's going to help you guys really shift. Okay, de lo mío, Jensen, que lo que, bro. So listen to this. Listen to what he says. And I want this. This hit me like a ton of bricks. Imagine it. Oh, imagine opening this up and reading this right away. He said, "You know what's funny about life?" Julian asked me. He said, "Tell me." By the time most people figure out what they really want and how to go about attaining it, it's usually too late. That saying, if youth only knew, if age only could, is so true. I'm going to repeat that again. By the time most people figure out what they really want and how to go about attaining it, it's usually too late. That saying, if youth only knew and if age only could. What am I saying by that? Okay. Is that we need to figure out what we really want now. Because if we're spending time doing something that we don't really want to do, then we're wasting our most precious commodity. You don't want to wait till it's too late to figure out what you really want in life, to figure out what your real purpose in life really is. Okay. And he starts to break it down a lot deeper. You see, because he understands that because time is our most precious commodity, money can come and go. But time, we can never get it back. So time is more valuable than money. Time is what we need to use more of, okay? And we all know the acronym for time. What do we say the acronym for time is? Things I must experience. It's all about the experiences that we give ourselves and the intensity behind those experiences, okay? So it's important that, you know, you, you value your time very importantly, because listen to this, listen to this story that he says, listen, this is so crazy. Look at what they did for him. So, uh, here it is. So this person was asked to bring him a, to bring him a, a gift, right? So it was the youngest person in the community. Listen to the story real quick. It's a quick paragraph. She said, as the youngest of our community, I have been asked to bring you a gift. She's talking to the guy, the monk who turned, the lawyer who turned monk. As the youngest of our community, I have been asked to bring you a gift. It is from all of us and we offer it as a token out of respect for you. One has traveled so far to learn our ways. At no point have you judged us or ridiculed our traditions. So though you have now decided to leave us within a few weeks, we consider you one of our own. No outsider has ever received what I'm about to give you. Okay, so they're about to give him a gift that nobody from the outside has ever been given because no one has ever earned their respect. And the person asked, yo, so what was the gift? I asked patiently. Her name was Divya. Divya pulled out an object from her homespun cotton bag and handed it to me. It was wrapped in a fragrant cover to some type of paper was something I never thought I'd see in a million years. It was a miniature. It was a miniature hourglass, which had been made from blown glass and a small piece of sandalwood. Seeing my expression, Divya quickly told me that each of the sages had received one of these instruments as a child. Though we have no possessions and live pure, simple lives, we respect time and know it's passing. These little hourglasses serve as a daily reminder of our mortality and the importance of living full, productive days while advancing our purposes. So imagine this guy spent all his time, he spent months in the Himalayan mountains, all right, practicing monk techniques. 
And when he was about to leave, one of the youngest came to him and said, yo, we got a gift for you. And she gifted him a small hourglass. As kids, these monks are taught that time is their most precious commodity. They live simple lives. They don't have phones over there. Okay. But they understand how important it is to do what? To value their time. And we got to learn how to value our time because write this down. Time mastery is life mastery. Time mastery is life mastery, which means we need to learn how to manage our time better. But this is what I've learned. It's not about managing time. It's about managing activities. It's not about managing your time. It's about managing the activities. Okay? This is so important. That's a good note to make. It's not about managing just your time. It's about managing the activities in that time. Time mastery is life mastery. Now, it's going to get deep. So it, it, who's ready for me to get deeper with this? This is still the introduction to this. Like, I'm really about to get really, really deep into this, fam. For real. I need you guys to understand this. So put a two in the chat box if you guys are taking notes and if you guys are ready to see what's next. Oh, my sis Julie's on here. I love you, sis. I hope you're doing amazing, fam. I'm in New York. Let's let's link up. So listen to this now. I'm about to, I'm about to get deep. Stay with me right here. Do not leave this call. Because now it's about to get deep, okay? So listen to what he says. He says, these monks in the highest reaches of the Himalayan mountains kept time? Question mark, he asked. He said, each and every one of them understood the importance of time. They each had developed what I call a time consciousness. You see, I learned that times slips through our hands like grains of sand, never to return. Those who use time wisely from an early age are rewarded with rich, productive, and satisfying lives. Those who have never been exposed to the principle that time mastery is life mastery will never realize that their enormous human potential will be lost. So, Understand this, guys, and, and this is what I understood from that when I got it. He said, time slips through our hands like grains of sand to never return. You ever pick up sand and see how it just slips through your hand? That's what he's saying time is to us. Time is like grains of sand that slip through our hands each and every single day, never to return. And we take it for granted. He said, but listen to this. And this is from my youngins on this call. But my youngins who are 25 or younger, let's say. I mean, I consider myself young. I, I, I'm Let's 30 or younger because I'm, I'm I'm not 30 yet. So let's say for 30 or younger, we're, we're still young. I guess when we turn 30, we're a little bit, we're, we're, we're considered old. But listen to this, though. Right? Young is a mindset, so I'm just kidding. But listen to this, though. He says, those who use time wisely from an early age are rewarded with rich, productive, and satisfying lives. Those who use time wisely from an early age, that means that all of us on this call, I'm going to consider all of us on this call young, because at the end of the day, we are all young, young in the soul. We got to learn how to use our time wisely now, okay? This is the important thing. This is important that we do this because if we're not using our time wisely, then we're not going to be able to realize what our full potential really is. You see, the human, the human being has enormous human potential. All of us have enormous human potential. You guys know who, who listen to my podcast, the human person, I mean, the, the, a human being only lives up to 10% of their potential in their lifestyle leaving 90% untouched. So think about it. Most people who live their lives only live up to accomplish only 10% of their potential. And you know, it's funny. I had, I had some, a spiritual person at a spiritual person kind of like 
read me a little bit. And you know what they told me? They said, I've only accomplished 20% of my potential. And they told me that last year. So when they told me that, I'm like, sheesh, I've only done 20%. What is the 80% that's missing? I feel like I've done so much. And I'm like, no, there's still so much more to do. Okay. This is so important. We got to realize that we have to do so much more with our time. Now, listen to this because this goes to my people that always say that they're busy. He says, we have all been allotted with only 24 hours. What separates those who build exceptional lives from the also rands is the way they use their time. I once heard my father say that it was the busiest people who have time to spare. What do you make of that? I agree. Busy, productive people are highly efficient with their time. They must be in order to survive. Being an excellent time manager doesn't mean that you must become a workaholic, though. On the contrary, time mastery allows you more time to do the things you love to do and the things that you truly are meaningful for you, okay? Time mastery leads to life mastery. Guard your time well. Remember, it's a non-renewable source. So what he's saying is you got to understand that once you start loving what you do, the time that you put into these things don't bother you. It's not like you're spending time doing something that you don't want to do. You see me, I could do these calls every single day. Why? Because this is me serving my purpose. Even if I do these calls for free, I've done them for free for years. I love doing it. You know why? Because it's my purpose. I love what I do. I could wake up every single day and do these calls. Why? Because I'm serving my purpose. I'm living up to my potential. I'm helping other people become better. So I've, I've actually been somebody that has learned to master my time in a way. I've learned to master my time in a way. Why? Because I spend time doing the things that I love doing. Okay. You got to remember that you got to find out what you love and dedicate your life to it. That's what I've done. I found what I love and I've dedicated my life to it. This does not, this does not, you got to remember this. You have to be the person that changes the way that you're looking at things. You cannot continue to do things that are not bringing you fulfillment, guys. You can't continue spending your most precious commodity doing things that don't bring you life purpose. You're still young, but time passes. Look, the first 90 days of the year are gone. It's already April. It feels like 2024 started the other day. We're already four months into the new year. Look at how fast time is passing. If in the last four months, you've let's say the last three months, have you spent your time doing things that you love to do or you spend your time doing things that you had to do? Let's be honest. Did you spend the last three months of the year doing what you loved to do or did you spend your time and energy and money doing things that you had to do? And what do I mean by you had to do? You had to go to work. You had to do those things. Did you, or did you love to do those things? Because like, what did we say? Time mastery is life mastery. You got to start spending more time doing what you love than doing things that you have to. Okay. Because most people live their lives doing things that they had to do. Okay. And I get it because you got to work because if you got to work, because you got to pay the bills, you got to provide for the family. I get that. Trust me. Of course, I'm not here telling you guys like, yo, go quit your job and forget it. Go do what you love and don't provide for your family. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you got to pay attention to where your time is going and how your time is being spent because you don't want to spend your most precious commodity for the rest of your life only doing things that you have to do. 
Can you do it for a period of time? Like, yo, I got to do this because I got to pay the bills, but I'm also going to leverage this job. I'm also going to leverage this right here to eventually help me do more of what I love to do. Because eventually, if you have that mindset, like, okay, I got to do this right now because obviously I got to provide for my family. I got to put food on the table. I got to pay the bills. But I'm also going to spend some time and some of this money as well over here on the right-hand side, part-time, doing things that I love to do. Because remember, you can work full-time on a job, but you can work part-time on what you love to do. And eventually, if you work on what you're doing enough part-time and what you love to do part-time, eventually your part-time can become your full-time. I can tell you guys because I know people on this call that have became full-time at what they love to do. This is important that all of you guys understand this. This is so key. Because listen, listen to what he says. He says, one of the great rules I learned from the wise old sage is that 80% of the results you achieve in your life come from the 20% of the activities that occupy your time. Yoga Raman called it the ancient rule of 20. I'm going to repeat it again. One of the great rules that the, that the monks live by is that 80% of the activities that occupy your time, sorry, sorry, 80% of the results you achieve in your life come from only 20% of the activities that occupy your time. So 80% of your results come from the 20% of the activities that occupy your time. So listen to what he says. He says, I'm not sure I follow you. He said, okay, let's get, he says, let's go back to your busy Monday, right? From morning until night, you might spend your time doing everything from chatting on the phone with clients, drafting legal pleadings, to reading your youngest child a bedtime story, or playing chess with your wife. Agreed? He says, agreed. But out of the hundreds of activities you give your time to, only 20% of those will, re, will, will yield real lasting results. Only 20% of what you do will have an influence on the quality of your life. These are high impact activities. For example, 10 years from now, okay, do you really think all the time you spent gossiping at the water cooler or sitting in front of some smoke filled lunch? Or watching television will count for anything? He said, no, not really. Right. So I'm sure you will also agree that there are a number of activities that will count for everything. He said, you mean like improving? He said, sorry. He said, you mean like time spent improving my legal knowledge, time spent enriching my relationship with my clients, and time invested in becoming a more efficient lawyer? He said, yes. And time spent nourishing your relationship with Jenny and the kids. Right. But this is what I want to this is what I want to say to you guys. And this is the book example. But think about us now. He says, go back to it. Let me go back to it really quick. Out of the hundreds of activities we give our times to only 20 percent will yield real results. OK, think about this 10 years from now. Let's all be real real quick. 10 years from now, do you think all the time we spent on Netflix is going to mean anything? Yes or no? Do you think all the time we spend scrolling on social media is going to mean something? Yes or no? Do you think all the time we spent out with our friends smoking and drinking is going to mean anything? Probably not. All the time we spent watching television, all the time we spent doing all these pointless things. Think about, think about how much time we spend on things that don't give us any value. Think about our 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 society today. Think about how much time we spend on our phones. Think about how much time we spend on social media. 10 years from now, that's not going to mean anything. You want me to put some things into perspective for you really quick? The average person spends six to seven hours a day on their phones. You multiply that by seven days a week, guys. That's almost 50 hours a week that people spend on their phones. They don't make money from it. Now, stay with me real quick. 50 hours a week. Let's for, for math purposes, 50 hours a week. 
times four weeks, that's 200 hours a month that people spend on their phones. That's non-productive. Now, 200 hours a month times 12, that's 2,400 hours a year that someone spends on their phone. On average, that's on average 2,400 hours a year. And those are the same people that you will ask them, you know, how much time did you spend reading a book this year? And they, and you know what they'll tell you? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have time to read. I don't have time to watch personal development. I don't have time to go to events. I don't have time to jump on a free YouTube with mornings or nano. I don't have time to start a new business. But they're spending 2,400 hours a year scrolling on their phones. But they don't have time. But those are the same ones that end up complaining about their money, the living situation, the car they drive, the fact that they can't attract the, the man or the woman that they want into their lives. It's crazy. But these are the kind of people we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay? This is what it's important. But let, listen to what he says. He says, yes, you got to spend time doing those things. But he says, you also got to spend time connecting with nature, showing gratitude for all that you are so fortunate to have. Time spent renewing your mind, your body, and your spirit. These are just a few of the high impact activities that will allow you to design the life you deserve. Direct all your time to those activities that count. Enlightened people are priority driven. This is the secret of time mastery. Guys, why do you think I prioritize my morning routine? You guys understand why I'm so hard on you guys? And I always repeat to you guys, yo, morning routines, morning routines, morning routines, morning routines, morning routines. Every call I mention it. Every call I mention it. Yo, a morning routine, a self-development routine. You guys got to be on point with this because that is what is going to help you. Look, listen to it. He said it again. He said you need to spend time renewing your mind your body and your spirit. You need to spend time showing gratitude. You need to spend time in connecting with nature. These are the things that matter. Spending time reading the book, spending time writing your goals down, spending time listening to the podcast. Listen, this is the time that really matters. My life today is rich and precious and abundant, not because of the money that I make. It was because of all the time that I've spent working on me, all the time that I've spent doing this. That's why I have the life that I have today. That's why I live a happy and full life. Somebody asked me the other day, Nana, why are you always so happy, bro? How are you always so happy? I'm like, bro, because I live the life of my dreams, bro. He was like, bro, but I don't, I don't see you in a Rolls Royce yet. Like, I don't see you living in a million dollar house yet. So what do you mean you live the life of your dreams? I'm like, bro, remember, those are materialistic things, bro. I live a life of purpose. More important than a life filled with material things is a life of purpose, bro. I live the life of purpose. I get to wake up every single day and I love what I do. I make a positive impact in the world. I'm getting people closer to God. I'm building my relationship with God. And every single day, I'm going to be the best version of myself. The material things will show up when they're supposed to show up. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm living my life happy and full and at peace because I know that everything works in my favor. Okay. I don't, I don't let, do, do, do I, do I have challenges in my life? Yes. But guess what? I don't look at challenges as bad things. Okay. I know that nothing is good or bad. All right. I understand that. So when things happen in my life, I know nothing is good or bad. It's what I make it. So if it's, if I make it good, it'll be good. If I make it bad, it'll be bad. So I live my life abundantly. Everything works in my favor. I expect miracles and I get miracles. Somebody left my life. It's okay. It was meant for them to leave my life. I made a mistake and I messed up. It was meant for me to learn that lesson. Okay. I look at everything as a life of purpose. Nothing is happening to me. Everything is happening for me. I've changed the way that I look at my life. I've changed the glasses that I've, I used to look at my life at, through. Okay. This is different. 
And the reason why I'm able to spend so much of my amazing time doing what I love, you know why? Because I worked on myself. I spent time doing things that were more valuable. The reason why I have a business today is because while everybody else was focused on money, on clothes, on jewelry, on sneakers, on materialistic things, you know what I was teaching my team and my community? I was teaching them, yo, get right with your mind. Get right with your mind. Figure out your purpose. Do what you want to do today. While others, thousands of people lost their businesses, you know who still has a business? Nano has a business. Because I was sharpening my axe every single day. Change the way you look at things. The things you look at start to change. Facts, they see that's how it is. Spend time working on you, guys. That's the name of the game. That is going to bring... He said... 20% of the activities that you focus on will determine 80% of your results. You know what the 20% is? Is that morning routine. You're not happy with the results in your life right now is because you're not spending enough time working on yourself. And that's the truth. You're not prioritizing working on yourself. You're not prioritizing it. You can't. It's impossible. This is so important. I was reading this and I was like, and I sat there and as I read through it, I was like, man, I feel like I need to tell people this again. Because remember, guys, time was going to promote you or it's going to expose you. Time will promote you or it exposes you. In a couple of months, whoever was putting in the work will be promoted. Whoever wasn't putting in the work will be exposed. And I'm not talking about the phone calls and the posting on social media. No, who did the work themselves? Who put the work into themselves? That's going to be the real question. How many books have you read this year? You know what you need to be asking yourself? Have you spent more time on Instagram than, than you spend reading books? Did you spend more time this year listening to music than you did listening to podcasts and audios? Did you spend more time writing messages to other people than writing down your own goals and your own dreams? If that's the reality, that tells you a lot about where your results are right now. Because the 20% that you need to be spending working on you, you're spending and doing things like scrolling on Instagram, spending time with people that you shouldn't be spending time with doing things you're not supposed to be doing. And now the 80% of your life doesn't look the way that you want it to because the 20% of the activities that you're supposed to be doing, you're doing it though, doing the wrong things. You don't want to, you don't want to be like that guys. How, how much longer do you want to live the way that you live? How much longer do you want to continue to live a life? You know how bad I wish I could just take my brain and just put it in yours. And I just wish one day you guys could wake up and feel what I feel. You know, you know how good it feels to wake up every day and know that you're doing what you love, that you're living in your purpose. That nothing affects you, that you live a life of abundance and purpose and that everything works in your favor. There's no better feeling than that. There truly is not a better feeling than that, guys. I need you to understand that. Like, I feel so good every day. But you know what it took? It took a lot of work. It took a lot of morning routines. It took a lot of books. It took a lot of listening to my to my audios. It took a, a lot of me healing my traumas and healing things and forgiving people. And, you know, it took so much of that. But if we're not prioritizing the most important thing, it's coming from the most successful people in the world that are telling us this. We got to work on us. We got to work on us. I come from the mud. I come from, I don't come from much, guys. But I was able to make it out. And now my only focus, which is this year, is to finally move my family out of here. This is all, this is my only focus now. Move my family out of here now. Because we've worked hard for this, man. Time management is very key. We got to spend time doing the things that are going to bring us value. That's what this book taught me. Look at this book, man. It's destroyed. 
but it's an amazing book and it'll change everything for you. Listen to this and we're almost going to wrap it up. One of the most tragic things that any, any one of us can do is put off living. Too many people are dreaming of some magical rose garden on the horizon rather than enjoying the one growing in our backyards. What a tragedy. I'm going to repeat that again. I hope that that, that that didn't go over your heads. Listen to this again. One of the most tragic things that any one of us can do is put off living. Too many people are dreaming of some magical rose garden on the horizon rather than enjoying the one growing in our backyards. What a tragedy. Nano, what do you mean by that? Well, let's talk about it. Too many people are dreaming of a magical rose garden in the horizon. That's the future. Everybody's so focused on, yo, this is this magical rose garden that I'm going to accomplish one day. We have these dreams. We have these goals, which are good. But the problem is too many people forget that you got to focus on the garden growing in your backyard, which is the one today. The only way that you'll be able to get that magical rose garden in the in the horizon is by working on the one in your backyard. You got to work on this one now. You will never get that garden if you're not working on the one right here, right now. Now, let me ask you guys a question. What do you guys think the garden represents, though? What do you guys think the garden represents? Anybody want to know? Anybody want to take a guess at what the garden represents in this specific example? It's your mind. The garden represents your mind, family. Your mind. That's what it represents. You got to focus on the garden in your backyard, which is the one right now here today. It's your mind. That's your garden. What you plant in your mind will grow. What are you planting in your mind? What are you planting in your mind? You want the beautiful rose garden in the future? You got to focus on it now. This this book has a has a chapter it's, one, it's my favorite chapter of all time. L let me let me just let me just show it to you guys. Such a beautiful chapter, man. I think I already passed it. But the most it's it's called the most extraordinary garden. It's my favorite chapter of any book I've ever read, honestly. It's just such a beautiful chapter when you actually read it. When you actually think about it, like the most the most extraordinary garden, I think it's called. But it's such a fire, fire, fire chapter. Like the way he breaks down the garden idea is, is absolutely crazy. Here it is. This chapter right here is truly life-changing. The most extraordinary garden. If you ever read that chapter, you'll look back and be like, now I know why Nano loves this book so much. It's it, and, and look, like I said, guys, I still to this day don't know who sent me the book. Like, I'm still trying to figure out, like, who could have sent me the book? And I don't know too many people. And no, and I've, and I've jumped on so many mornings with Nano like this. And I've asked people, like, yo, if it was you, please tell me, like, I want to know who sent me this book. But still to this day, I don't know who sent it to me. But it changed my life, guys. I've never been the same ever since this book. Because it taught me the little things that so many of us overlook. I remember reading this book and being like, man, I'm overlooking these things. I need to prioritize me. If you, th this, that, that chapter doesn't do the book any good. Like I just, I just gave you guys a little bit of the, some of the things I have highlighted, but if you actually read the book and you see the whole thing, like I'm telling you, it'll change you forever. Like none of you will ever be the same. At some point this year, I don't know what books you're reading right now, but at some point this year, add that book to your to your um to your book list. And I promise you, you'll look back and be like, wow, it makes sense now. And one day you guys will look back and be like, yo, I can't believe 
that Nano was always telling us about this damn morning routine. And that was always the key from the beginning. One day you guys will all look back once you guys become better versions of yourselves and you figure out your life purpose and you guys are going to be like, she's this whole time. Neno, he gave us all these trainings, but all we really needed was the morning routine. The morning routine is the key that unlocks all doors. If you have, if you can follow a solid routine every single day, and it doesn't just have to be a morning routine. Like I said, it could be, it could be a self-development routine. It could be something you do in the afternoon. It could be something that you do at night. It just needs to be something where every day you work on you. And you guys will start to realize like, yo, this is all it is. I am no, I'm not, I'm not the most talented. I'm still rough around the edges. I'm still not perfect. But you know what it is, guys? Every day I work on me. Every day I take the time to make myself a priority. And I take advantage of my most precious commodity which is my time. Do I still spend time doing a lot of other things? Yes. But in that 20% of the activities, my morning routine is included in there, which means I'm spending time every day renewing my mind, my body, and my soul. Every day. Every day I renew my mind, my body, and my soul. Those are the most valuable things because let me ask you guys a question. 10 years from now, are those morning routines going to mean something? Yes or no? If I spend 10 years doing my morning routine, is it going to mean something 10 years from now? Yes or no? Of course it is. Of course it is. It's going to mean everything. Cedric said no. Of course it is, Cedric. What you mean no, bro? Of course it's going to mean everything. It will mean everything. It's going to mean everything because I spent 10 years renewing my mind, my body, and my soul. My mind will be clear, clear of problems, clear of challenges, clear of negative thoughts, doubts, fears, insecurities. 10 years from now, I'll be lit. But it starts now. And look, something so small. Something I only dedicate, what, two hours a day to? Was that 14 hours a week? 20, what was that, 50 plus hours a month? I don't, I don't mind that. Because I know people who are spending 200 hours a month on their phones. But they're complaining about their living situation. They're complaining about the lack of money. Pay attention to what's happening in front of you. Enough is enough. It's time for us to make things that are important priorities. Time is our most precious commodity. If we're going to be spending time, we better be spending time doing the things that are going to help us fulfill our purposes and help us become better. You spend more time on you and later your life will be rich, abundant and blessed. And that's my training for today, guys. So if you guys got value from today's training, put a 333 in the chat box. If you guys got value from today's training, uh, you know, today I just really wanted to talk to you guys more than anything. I was like, man, what am I going to talk to the fam? And because the book came up, I was just like, you know, what? Well, I'm going to talk about time and the way that this book has impacted me. And, you know, I actually started to look through the chapters and I'm like, man, I may have to I may have to dedicate a couple more time for this book because. There's just so much that I can go over in this book, bro. There's so much I can go over in this book. Look at look at what he says here real quick. This is one of my favorite chapters right here. The ultimate purpose of life. Appreciate you, fam. Listen to this. Where is it? Where is it? Listen to this. He says... Right here. This is what this is why I love this book so much because it made me it made me realize that I'm living the best life. He says, one of the most essential of all of the virtues for enlightened living that I can share with you, John, is this one right here. When it's all said and done, no matter what what you have achieved, no matter how many summer homes you own, no matter how many cars you sit in your driveway, 
the quality of your life will come down to the quality of your contribution. That hit me like a ton of bricks. The quality of your life will always come down to the quality of your contribution. You guys ask me, Nana, why you live such a, an amazing life? It's because I live a life of contribution, fam. What did he say? When it's all said and done, it's not going to matter what I achieved. How many, own, how many summer homes I own? How many cars sit in my driveway? What watch I have? The luxury clothes, the this, the that. None of that is going to matter. The quality of my life will come down to the quality of my contribution. I'm grateful that you guys allow me to live my purpose through some of you guys. To jump on these calls and help you guys become better. This is what it's all about. Con contributing, helping others. The quality of your life will be determined by how many others you help. You know how good it feels to know that every single day I get a chance to help thousands of people become better, to wake them up, get them closer to God, realize their full potential, overcome these things. There's nothing better than that. But that's what it's about. It's about the contribution. But in order for you to contribute to others, you got to work on you. You can't contribute to others if you're not working on you. You can't pour into others if your cup is empty. You can't help others become a better version of themselves if you're not the better version of yourself. So how can you contribute? How can you live a life of purpose if you have not worked on you? Remember, you must lead your life before you can lead others. I'm guiding you guys to live the most amazing life if you allow me to. But if you can't even do the simple little things of making yourself a priority, then your life purpose is going to be very hard for you to accomplish that. I live an amazing life. I want all of you guys to live an amazing one as well. All right, guys. So that is my training for today. I hope you guys all have a beautiful rest of your days and a beautiful rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for even giving me your time to listen to me. You know, some of you guys gave me an hour. What do we have on this call? We have an hour and six minutes on this call. You guys gave me an hour and six minutes of your time. I pray that I was able to give you guys value in this time. And it wasn't time spent. It was time invested. Okay. The time that you spent on this call was invested. It wasn't spent. Because you learn simple little tricks that are going to allow you guys to grow and become a better version of yourself. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. I have and have a beautiful weekend. Um, remember, time mastery is life mastery. Manage your time a lot better so that you can see how much better your life is going to be. I'm going to do a quick prayer for all of us before we go. And then we're going to wrap up that call right there. So if everybody can just bow their heads real quick and let's do a quick prayer before we go. And let's run it up. Father God, we thank you so much for allowing us to wake up on this beautiful Thursday morning. We are thankful for it all, God. We are thankful for your guidance. We are thankful for your wisdom. We are thankful for your protection and for you continuing to create a community where we can grow and elevate. Today, we understood and, and, and learned about our most precious commodity, which is our time. And we understand that, most importantly, that we got to use our time more effectively, Father. We got to start using our time to live the life of our dreams and live a life of purpose, live a life where we're contributing to others. But most importantly, live a life where we're prioritizing ourselves so that we can be the examples that we want to see in the rest of the world. We ask that you continue to guide us and show us the way on how we can prioritize ourselves better, how we can eliminate the things that are distracting us from our full potential and distracting us from becoming the better version of ourselves. Remove any enemies, remove any negative thoughts, remove the fears, the doubts, the insecurities remove the distractions, remove the people, anything that is in the way right now, God, that is not allowing us to see a bigger picture, Father, remove it from our lives. I speak on behalf of the whole entire community listening to this. Remove it all and allow us to live a life of purpose. We appreciate you so much for all that you do for us. Words cannot describe the gratitude we feel in our hearts for all that you're doing for us. So we keep our hands open for all the blessings you have for us. We appreciate you. We love you. Let's have a great weekend. In God's name we pray. Amen. 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 Sheesh. That was a good one right there.
That's it. God is going to remove it all. So anything that is distracting you, anything that is not helping you, any person, any fear, any emotions, any thoughts, God is going to remove it all. Now is all about us focusing on making ourselves a priority. Remember, when we do these prayers, we're also, we're talking to God. So if we tell God that moving forward, we're going to prioritize ourselves and then we don't do it, then we're going against him. Okay. So make sure that you guys prioritize yourself and, and, and keep your word to God. Okay. So with that being said, guys, make sure that you guys follow me on Instagram. If you guys already don't, my Instagram is at long live nano. Okay. In my bio, Yo, you know what's funny? I just remembered. I didn't post this in my bio today, actually. I didn't. Now that I realize, I didn't post it in my bio today. I just forgot. Um, but yeah, in my bio, I have the Nano's exclusive mentorship. I drop it in there every Tuesday and Thursday. I didn't drop it in there today, but um, you guys will know because I'll be live on YouTube and you guys can come in here. But if you guys want to stay up to date to all my sessions and everything that's going to be going on with Mornings with Nano on YouTube, Stay plugged in. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already subscribed. I'm not only going to be doing lives. I'm also going to start doing like vlogs and a lot of other stuff that you guys are going to be, you know, be able to take advantage of. I think I'm going to do a little book club as well at some point very soon here. I want to do a book club so that you guys can learn from it and be able to elevate with. But just know this is a great community. Follow me at Mornings with Nano as well. I have a Mornings with Nano page and you know, I'm just extremely grateful for all of you guys. So I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your days, a beautiful rest of your weekend. Remember, don't let your weekend be your weekend, fam. I'll see you guys again next Tuesday. And let's continue to run it up, fam. I love you guys and I appreciate you guys. God bless.